this video I'm going to be specifically making it for my M104 classes at IUK. We are going to be taking a look at how to solve a linear inequality in one variable. And specifically I'm doing this example because it contains fractions. All right, it's not just a straight, nice, easy little inequality that you're going to be able to solve. It's going to have some fractions in there, so it's going to have extra steps. Uh, this it will be content that is coming from section 4-1. All right, so the main thing here is anytime you're trying to solve it, it doesn't matter whether it's an inequality or an equation. If you're trying to solve something that has fractions in it, the easiest way to do it would be to get rid of those fractions. Okay, so the way you go about doing that is looking at those denominators and coming up with the least common denominator. All right, so I've got a 6 and a 12. I want to come up with the smallest number that both 6 and 12 go into. All right, so obviously it's going to have to be bigger than the biggest number. All right, in this case, it turns out to be the biggest number. The least common denominator is 12 because 12 goes into 12 and 6 goes into 12. All right, so on this one, the least common denominator is 12. Okay, so I'm going to multiply through by that least common denominator. All right, and usually I do it like this, and then I write it only in one location. Uh, let's go ahead and put it on the left. I've got enough room here. Now, the reason I don't uh, show it being multiplied by each individual thing is because that clutters up the problem. Okay, so what I do is I just, we know distributive property. I know that I've got to take this and multiply it by everything on the inside of the equation. Okay, so, or it should have said inside the inequality here. So I'm going to distribute. I write it once, and then I distribute it so that it doesn't clutter up the problem. All right, now when I'm doing this multiplication right here, all right, it's 12 divided by 6, which gives you a 2, times everything that's left in the numerator. That's just the fastest way to do it. All right, 12 divided by 6 gives you 2, okay, so I'm going to write that down, times everything that's in that numerator, and that numerator is a binomial. So 4x minus 3. Okay, now when I multiply here, there is no fraction. So just a plain 12 times 2 is a 24. Greater than or equal to, okay, again, 12 divided by 12, that's 1, times whatever's in the numerator. Again, this is a binomial in my numerator, so 1 times that is just going to be that. All right, so if you successfully multiply through by that least common denominator, then the very next step, all your fractions are gone. Okay, and then now this turns this into just your standard inequality that we've been solving in this section. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this out. 2 times the 4 there is going to give me an 8x minus 6 plus the 24 greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. Let's combine some like terms here. It's a negative 6 plus 24. That'll give me an 18. So 8x plus 18 greater than or equal to 2x minus 1. All right, at this point, I do this all in the same step. I need to move the x's to the left. I need to move the numbers to the right. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. That's going to let me cross it out on the right-hand side. Okay, I need the numbers to move over to the right, so I'm going to subtract 18, subtract 18, and cross out the 18s on the left-hand side. Okay, so putting these two together here, I'm going to have a 6x is greater than or equal to. Putting this together, I'm going to have a negative 19. Okay, so divide both sides by that 6 there. x is greater than or equal to negative 19 over 6. All right, now, that technically is a correct answer. All right, if you are planning on putting this on a number line and estimating it, it really probably would help to go ahead and put that into a mixed number. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and 1 6. That just might be easier when you go to place it on your number line. Okay, so on our number line, Okay, since this is a college algebra class, we're going to be using the um, closed brackets and open bracket concept. All right, negative 3 and 1 sixth is going to be in between negative 3 and negative 4. So I'm going to put a negative 2 and a negative 3, a negative 4, and a negative 5 on my number line. Yeah, appropriately, that just shows that you know how to put the numbers on the number line in the right order. Now, a negative 3 and 1 6 is going to be just a little bit past. All right, technically, I should not put a hash mark for negative 3 and 1 6. All right, because the only hash marks on a number line should be integers. All right, so I'm going to just estimate about where that's going to be. All right, let's just say right there, just rough estimate. All right, it says x is greater than or equal to. All right, so the numbers that are greater are going to be to the right. 
the equal to part means I want to include negative 3 and 1 6, so I'm going to do the square bracket. So there's my square bracket. All right, I might go ahead and label that negative 3 and 1 6 there. All right, and then I'm shading everything to the right of that. All right, with the square bracket. All right, if you were in a high school class and you were trying to solve this, this would be a solid dot because usually high school uh, classes do open dot, close dot. Usually by the time you move up to pre-calc and um, college algebra, they move to the square bracket and curvy bracket. Same concept. Either you include the point or you don't include the point in your solution. All right, after you have done the graph, then you can easily write your answer in interval notation. Oops, that would be an O. Interval notation. And if you have done your number line correctly, then it sets it up really nice for you. You're going to use that square bracket. You're going to have the either the negative 19 sixth or the negative 3 and 1 sixth. It doesn't matter the form of the number there. And then all of the numbers up to positive infinity on that number line with a curvy bracket right there. So really just one more example uh, for my M104 students showing, again, how to deal with those fractions. All right, multiplying through by that least common denominator. If you do that correctly, the very next step, all your fractions will be gone, and then it'll be just your standard inequality. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.